G'day everybody and welcome along this evening. Uh, you're with Phil Smith, Pastor Phil from Bells Uniting Church and it is Thursday evening and so it's time for What's Our Story and great to have your company with us this evening and this evening we've got uh, some very interesting characters for us to meet including, well as much as I, I have to say, somebody with far more sartorial splendour than me. I'm just loving the bow tie for it. Um, Thank you, thank you. Lovely to be with you. Um, the, the golden microphone is somehow reminiscent of John Laws. Well, yes, I thought I'd uh, get that out there. <laughs> well, uh, just, just because, you know, size matters. I'll, oh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, there we are. That's my... I've just got the silver one, though. Right, you know, fair enough. Uh, by no means the bronze medal winner, Nikki Pulfer, joining us from Duran Bandy. How are you? Really good, thank you. Really good. I, this still amazes me that uh, but Corey, who is basically, I don't know, what, 500 metres from my place as the crow flies? Yeah, that, that. Lives in the neighbourhood. And Duran is how far from Caloundra? Um, I think it's about, is it about 800? You, about 800 days, something like that. Uh, more than that. So um, I, I've ridden it the once and driven it the once, and there we are. So What's Our Story is the opportunity for us at um, in Bell's Faith Community to, yeah, basically hear one another's stories because that's part of our whole story. And the great idea that there is my story and our story and then where that fits in the big story is an opportunity for us on Thursday evening just to meet some folks and hear what's going on. And at the moment, we're in a series in uh, discipleship and we're, we're thinking about this whole idea where Jesus says you really need to to love God with your head, your heart, and your hands. That's what discipleship is about. That's what a good life looks like, where we thought through, um, understanding something more of who God is, where our hearts are, are focused in, in a sense of faith and commitment, and it's lived out with what we do every day, not just going to church on Sundays. So those are the ideas I want to explore with these two, and, and they are people of quite remarkable different backgrounds. Um, I'm going to go straight to my left, Corey, if we were at a barbecue and we said, oh, g'day, mate, my name's Phil, how would you introduce yourself to it? Um, good question. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, just a, a regular guy currently studying uh, university to be a primary teacher and, yeah, working as a school officer at the moment. A, uh, a manufacturer and tailor of bow ties. In my spare time, among other things, yes. You have always struck me as one of those people who could turn his hand to most things. That's certainly been true in your working life, as I recall. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, done many things. Um, working in a butcher, obviously, with, with Dad and um, in supermarkets. Working with Coca-Cola uh, when I still lived in New Zealand. Um, landscaping. Um, Again, back in supermarkets, uh, yeah, best control, and now in the school. Okay, that's um, yeah, that's a diverse sort of a career. Your husband and dad as well, uh, yep. and a Kiwi, but we're just going to have to be okay with that. Well, there's still a dispute over whether I am or not. Uh, being born in Geelong, but yeah. Uh, okay, so don't stand for Parliament. That could it could become an issue. Yeah, dual citizenship. I can't uh, can't be Parliament. No. Okay, fair enough. Nikki Palfer um, is married to a Kiwi. Yes. That's the closest connection you've got to New Zealand. That's all I got. I first met Nikki when she was a <clears throat> chaplain um, at a couple of state schools in the, the Sunshine Coast hinterland, and now you're in a very different circumstance. But, again, if, if we were, it wouldn't be a barbecue. It would be at a high tea or some such thing. And uh, you were introducing yourself, Nikki. What would be, you know, your 30-second story? I think the first thing I would say was, "Good on, Mickey. How are you doing?" Which would be very, very different to possibly my past. Um, I worked for the Commonwealth Bank for about ten years. Became a or worked or study while the children were little. Became a hairdresser. I was always a believer in go big or go home. So I purchased a salon in Hastings Street. Um, Lisa, for those of you watching in other parts of the world. Noosa. Yes. Then I decided to expand and I had a children's salon and a beauty salon, all in the same area. And 
we had elocution lessons every six months, and I would walk around in stilettos and speak with a plumbing on now. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> sometimes tragedy strikes, and you go through a change of life. I went and studied at the Sunny Coast University Psychology, and that led me to school chaplaincy. Stayed there for seven wonderful, wonderful years, and ugh, I've always believed that God, if you say yes, he will take you on an amazing journey, and that's how I got out to be a I said yes. And Diran is not like Noosa. I'm, I'm still waiting for my cap that says Noosa, Maui, Diran, Bandy. Next time I'm out there, I have to get one. Definitely. Definitely. So Duran's a town of about 340 people? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. About 200 in town and, um, and about another, another two, 250 out in, the, in the, um, the farms and things like that surrounding. So, again, if you're watching from elsewhere, think out back. Just go that classic out back where the streets are wide enough to turn a three-dog road train around in a U-turn not far from the New South Wales border. Um, wonderful, fabulous sort of part of the world. Well, let's let's jump into this head, heart and hands idea and how we try to live out this idea of, of being Jesus' people. Um, in the headspace, how do you two make decisions in that kind of rational sense that says, this is a right thing for me to do? Leave school chaplaincy, take over a caravan park in the outback or, you know, Whatever, or, you know, in, in my age when I have preteen daughters, I'm going to take up study. I'm going to have to, you know, commit myself to four years of really hard slog. How do you use head to try to understand something of, of wisdom in that? Um, I think it, it comes down to, I guess, um, that openness in, in the heart to do maybe, or in my case, um, what I've always felt with, um, working with, with children in, in one way or another. And, um, you know, it, it took a serious sort of look of to a degree, can we afford to do this both time and money wise? Um, yeah, so you got to weigh in those factors before you go into it. That, that sounds, um, if I'm hearing right, something about passion. Do you have some sort of a sense in which that's a God-given thing? That's just a part of who you were born to be? Definitely, yeah. Um, so heading towards teaching, I, as I keep saying, I don't know if that's where I'm going to uh, end up being, but it's where I'm heading for now. Um, and that's certainly um, a fair way through most of my life, probably feeling a bit of, uh, a, a, I guess, a calling as such towards that, that direction, yeah. Okay. Nikki, you know, from racing minis uh, at um, Sandown and, and that kind of just, you know, crazy head sort of stuff, you're also somebody who, who thinks things through. What is it for you to try to understand what God wants with the grey matter? Uh, yeah. I think if I can be brutally honest, I love dirt loved working with children and I think sometimes God can call you into a scenario for a period of time um, I still have an extreme soft spot for children and when, especially when they're in trauma and so leaving challenges was really quite hard it was a really hard decision I, I, I had a lot of pain with that but I knew in my heart that if God can take a, a, a non-believing couple and, and encourage them to gift myself and Scotty a house, totally free, all the rates are paid up, a whole lot. That's, that's, that's definitely a higher power. And then to go on that journey of renovating and, and travelling backwards and forwards and falling in love with a community and the opportunity to renovate and establish uh, or renovate the convent and the old chapel and then establish an area where people can come 
and just be seven days a week somewhere where it's open because one of the things I realised when we moved out here was that the church is only open the first or the fourth or the third Sunday of the month for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and that's it. If your problem doesn't fit into that that little box, you might find it a bit of a, people need somewhere to go when they need to connect, when they need to sit and be and connect. And that's that's what really called us here. It's not the caravan park. I had to learn to do that. It's literally that that wanting to provide that space for people to be. Okay, again, I think I'm hearing something that's got to do with passion that then shapes mm. the way in which you think. So if this was simply about I want to be in tourism and make X dollars, well, there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, but mm. this is about engagement in a community. You also mentioned seasons, and, and I'd just like to follow that up. Corey, what's your sense of uh, I, I think Nikki used a phrase, she said, God could call you into something and call you out of something. Yeah. What's the sense of, of that for you in a world where we, I, I don't think we think in seasons, I think we, we, we think in 30 second sound bites um, or Snapchat, you know, it's, it's, it's not long, um, but seasons, <laughs> seasons are a different thing. Um, yeah, I, I definitely would, would believe along that same sort of lines. You know, we're all meant to do what we're meant to do and go where we're meant to go for whatever reason. Um, it's it's not a um, the be all end all. This is the way you're going and that's it. Um, you're going this way for the time it takes for you to learn the lesson. I guess that you um, I need to learn. Okay, so I, I'm thinking again about this in terms of this following Jesus thing, and we've said that Jesus says, "Come follow me," and he says to people. You know, when somebody says to him, and they're probably trying to be a smart ass, but, you know, well, what's the most important thing? And he says, well, you know what it is. Love the Lord your God with all your head, with all your heart, and with your hands. So in the living of these things is actually where it bears fruit. How have you two found that sense of uh, what's in here, what you've come to sense of God has to actually be expressed in what you do? that you are human beings in a total way and that's what God has meant for you to be. How, how do you sort of get that idea going? Hmm. It's, a, it's a tough one, I guess. Um, Let me put it up. There are people who would say to me, hey, my faith thing is my own business and I don't put it out there. Yeah. I, I just can't see how that can be. You can seem to overflow with what's inside is shown in the real world. I think for me, one of the biggest things is um, we we throw it around a little bit. Being uh, being Jesus with skin on, you know, just just being out there in the world and showing kindness and compassion, being non-judgmental, being warm and welcoming. All of those things that you can, whether it be um, in the caravan park whether it's my interactions in town, being there for folks in the good and the bad. Um, and, it, and I think the most challenging thing is when you meet somebody that you know, forgive me, but is from the wrong side of the tracks and they've done a few things that you really think, oh, my gosh, to be able to not judge and to reach out and help I think that is one of the most powerful things that says who we are and what we believe in and what drives us. Well, you know, I mean, and that's the second part of what, what Jesus says, and love your neighbour as yourself. That's, mm. And that's not a theoretical thing. That's a, that's a hardcore practical thing. Mm. Corey, how does that sort of stuff live out for you? Yeah, um, Definitely feel that, uh, especially working in school this term when they're looking at uh, community and what that meant in the time of Jesus and that real sense of, of um, walking together and being together and, and what communities are. Um, and I guess I guess to a degree all, all the things are related. Um, we have a, a passion, we're pulled somewhere from our heart 
we use our heads to sort of organise that, and then our hands are used then to do the works that they are to do. Um, so it all comes in together for me, um, and certainly um, going back to what Nikki was saying about um, that place to go, um, again, from this year at school, um, you know, learning about what the synagogue was for um, as a community meeting place, you know, with, with being as a church or a place of worship, you know, as, as a secondary thing. So getting together, helping one another, being with one another, um, yeah. And, and there's, there's something that, in, that I'm hearing there that's about being a person of integrity in that all those things are integrated, yeah. um, that, that it's not separate parts of our lives, but that these things actually do that. And when our lives are like that together, then we find that community, that shared oneness. How have you found some of the COVID experience of the recent months where we haven't been able to find that integrated living with one another um, and, and there's maybe had to be more focus on, well, what's integrated within me when I am perhaps more alone? Phil, hmm. just, just before I delve into that one, can I just mention something? Corey, watching Corey in youth and, and, and his passion for, for the youth group on the Friday night, that was fantastic to watch. And one of the perfect examples of him you know, using his hand was the fact that we desperately needed him when it came to the computer systems. We desperately had no clue how to sign kids in and out. And that's just one of those things that's absolute gold. And Corey was always there for us, always. Even if he had something on, he would duck in, duck out. It was, it was absolute gold. And it's one of those, the heart's there, but the hands were there too, and we needed them. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, back to you. Sorry. <laughs> it was just really awesome. It really was. Yeah, I, I, um, I will never forget a phone call, a, a, a conversation we had driving along on the way back from a session we attended of oh, the other side of Brisbane somewhere, and and you were just sharing from your heart and saying what could be. So in this time of, of a bit of social isolation or homestay, if we want to put a, a nicer term on it, what's been the sense of personal reflection? Has there been time for that and maybe even a good season for that? Corey? There's certainly um, been some time for that. Um, to a degree, I guess, there wasn't as much disruption to our lives as possibly um, some others. So we were able to sort of still go along as, as well as we could. Um, with both of my parents living a fair distance away, we were already communicating by phone or um, FaceTime, so that didn't alter too much. Um, but certainly a time to think um, how can we live and what can we do. And, um, I think back to my wife. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> The golden microphone. The ratings have collapsed. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> uh, I think Beck, my wife, sort of put it uh, pretty well in that a lot of the um, spread has come down to sort of two degree selfishness of people only thinking about themselves rather than um, the greater good in the community and looking at how it affects them rather than what they can do to help the rest of the community. Yeah, and, and I, I hope that some of that, that type of thinking will be what changes um, fundamentally for us as a community, that instead of um, a life that says, I'm a self-made man and I worship my creator, um, you know, that, that if I can pull myself up by the bootstraps, uh, instead of, well, actually, I live within uh, a community of people and have a part to play in that, and when that's good for all of us, that's good for me, and maybe there's a shift in that. And sometimes I think we, blokes especially, have dressed that up as individualism uh, when really we need a much more um, 
shared view. Mate, I, along these lines, I want to ask you about it's um, a bit more than a year ago. It was Easter a year ago that you yeah. were baptised. Yeah. And, uh, that, again, was just a, a great day. I think on our Facebook group there's still that picture of um, – of at the beach with the community there. Yeah. How did you come to to that decision to say this is a thing that that I want to do? What was your sense of obeying God and a sense of call in your heart? Yeah, um, I guess for years before coming to Bells, I sort of uh, my faith was was I guess sort of stagnant. Um, it was there, but it wasn't uh, alive. Not alive. It wasn't. Uh, flourishing um, and when coming to Bell I found that real sense of community and it really reignited um, my faith again and it, when we're sort of talking around um, baptism looking through that at, at, on Sunday nights um, I came to that sort of that feeling sensation that um, this is something that I just really you know, I want to be a part of um, and I just thought it was the right time to um, to commit myself to God in that way, and and, and yeah, be baptized. Mm. We're sort of heading up towards time um, on this particular webcast, I'm afraid. But Nikki, I want to ask you because that, in my mind, that flows somehow into what it is to be church instead of to go to church, and. Mm. On the Sunshine Coast here, you know, I could swing a cat and I could find seven or eight or ten, you know, um, large churches, small churches, all sorts that I could be a part of. But when one finds oneself in a, a small community where there is not the way we've understood church before, how does that go for you as being somebody who says, I want to be a Jesus follower in this place and I don't have the luxury of a weekly service with a band and a pastor and the three hymn sandwich or whatever it looks like? I think what it does for you is it really highlights, um, it takes you away from the stereotypical, which is what you're saying, and it really highlights the fact that to be a Christian, to have faith and to to live that out, you're doing it 24-7. Not always right, but you're doing and it And that's just one of those moments, I think, where <laughs> the line's going to freeze up. Uh, Corey, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I can hear Nikki, all right? No, for some reason. Oh. All right. Well, that's all in the timing. Uh, I want to thank you both for being with us this evening, and uh, I'm not sure if we've lost internet connection through to Diren. It must be that time of night when uh, everybody's doing that. Thanks very much for, for sharing your stories with us. It is much appreciated. And thank you, folks, for, uh, for putting your comments down the side. If I could just leave you with, um, if you'd like to connect with us a bit more, then by all means, join us uh, on Sunday afternoons. And uh, we um, are live here on this Facebook stream at 5.30. Our service goes out for about a half an hour. And it comes from different people's places. And you would be most welcome to join some of us for dinner in that home church environment. We do this on Thursday evenings at half past seven. And uh, throughout the week, if you're looking at this Facebook page, you'll find our daily reflections and devotions and some of the other things that we're up to. We've got a trivia night on Saturday night at the um, CCSA Hall. You'll see uh, a, a link for that a little bit further down, and there are still some tickets available if they're free. And if you'd like to be with us, you'd be most welcome. Every blessing, and we will see you again in just a little while. Thanks a lot.